Greetings and salutations and welcome once again to the Capeless Crusaders live from the safe house. That's what we're calling it. We have we literally have a nickname for every single different aspect of every single home that we've ever <laughs> recorded in. My name is David Barry at DR Barry on varying social media platforms. You see it right there. If you're listening in the audio, you can't see it. Uh, regardless, to my right, are you done with the sandwich? Yeah, okay. but to I my, have chips. <laughs> to my right, we have. I'm Amy. You can find me at IJ New Robot on varying social media. And because uh, a happy gamer, Piper is currently on hiatus with his lady. So uh, there will be no Piper tonight. But I will alley-oop like this because I suck at basketball. Don't tell anybody, but he's going to catch it. Guy on the far end who has not been here for quite a moment. I believe episode 50. Was oh. episode 50 the last time you were in front of the... Oh my gosh, actually, I don't even right. remember. When we had Jamie? It was the collect. It was the, the recollection. Yeah, we have. Maybe. Uh, this is Curtis. Uh, calm down warning it is a super Romeo. What up? I can, uh, I can still do that. Yes. <laughs> I didn't, the chat I didn't know I could so you know, No, no, no. I've been on the show since then because when we were at uh, ECD, um, we had some cams. We had some free cams. So that was, is true. I was on there. That is true. But just not in full cadet. Not in not in the the episode mode. Regardless, welcome to the Cable Crusaders. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks for uh, if you're on Twitch, welcome. Welcome to the chat. If you're listening afterwards, if you're on YouTube, uh, welcome to the past. Uh, if you're on audio, <laughs> welcome. Uh, welcome. Regardless. Anyway. Well double welcome so uh not joining us this evening uh our uh la correspondent who was on last week's episode he should be back soon ah that is tom at tall dark not ugly on everything and the azorian one anthony steves who is in the chat room currently messing around crying about this is us and so on and so forth uh if you are a football fan uh congratulations to philadelphia eagles if you're not a football fan and you're a yay sports yeah exactly uh yay commercials then team commercials then nothing changed then, then a Sunday went on, and uh, you don't need to worry about uh, about anything. Because uh, every little thing's going to be all right. Every little thing's going <laughs> to be all just right. take it home, Is Bob Is somebody Marley. making threats in the chat about bodily harm? No, oh. No one's doing that. <laughs> no, one's, no one's causing any kind of you know bodily harm to anyone. Nightbot. As always, <laughs> if you check out, we have our sponsors, Computer Booter. Our local computer repair, mobile device repair, retro game lounge. Uh, I forgot if you mentioned that you saw the ad here, not here, you get 10% off. What? 10% 10%? off. 10%? Yes, for going down into Computer Booter. Dude, we're going to go down. And they are, uh, they help sponsor our Twitch stream uh, and all of our audio. And as always, anything related to the Capos Crusaders, you can find it at the Capos Crusaders. Dot com. I just could keep poking above Curtis's head because that's where all the ads are. Uh, you can check out thecablescusaders.com for anything related. We're going to get our blogs back up and running. We've got links to all of our social media, so on and so forth. So, when we have an episode of The Capeless Crusaders, Uh-oh. when we uh, talk about comic books, uh, we like to do this thing where we go round the horn. <laughs> That's the wrong horn. Wait, we don't have the <laughs> <laughs> The general Lee. Yeah, that's a, apologies. Uh, I, I haven't queued up my hotkeys yet. Yeah, so round the horn. We go around the horn. We go around the table in a circular fashion, except for the fact that we no longer have a circular table. We have not had a circular table in what seems like an age. Or two. Or two. Uh, but when we go around the horn, we talk about what comic books we have been reading this week. Um, which sometimes is a stretch sometimes uh, sometimes it's um people having to reach back into their old uh old catalog uh sometimes it's ikea catalogs so sometimes sometimes but not oh, today rest in peace ingvar Kamprad. Oh, the uh, ikea the ikea lord himself may you <laughs> may you rest in that heavenly intrude and put together a million all the flat pack. Hemness. May, may the, Malm the angels bed. and their flardugs uh, sing, yes. sing your praise. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I appreciate welcome. it. Also, I think everybody does. That's yelling around the horn in the chat. Annoying horn sound. I, I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Even though I queued up the intro and not the horn. 
That's I have a newborn. It's not the horn they want, but it's the horn when that they, they deserve. It's not I'm the gonna they need. I'm gonna start us off because I read two things. Two. Uh, one of which was fourteen things. What? Because I reread a, an uh. entire series. Um, <laughs> so I I uh, started it off with a comic called Ringside. Um, so mm-hmm. Ringside, yes, is from mm-hmm. Image Comics. Uh, it is about professional wrestling and um, crime. Uh, <laughs> it focuses on uh, a character who is out of the wrestling business. Uh, the the corporate entity, the aka their WWE, owns the rights to his character, so he can't do anything with his character anymore. Um, and he finds out that his love interest and long lost friend has gotten into some trouble with some drugs and with some people who he owes some money to so he's going to go basically into crime and kind of a lightweight mercenary work to pay off his debt uh, it also follows um his friend who's still in the industry and the guys that he is training and kind of so you see both sides you see this interesting crime story but you also see um basically a really cool look into the background of professional wrestling uh when it comes to the training the creative process, uh, how difficult it is to break in, how they poorly they treat their people. Uh, it's a really good comic. It's on issue 14. Um, I, I don't know if it's wrapping soon, but I know there's an arc definitely coming to an end. Uh, the other thing that I read uh, was Abbott number one. Um, Why so, does that sound familiar? Yes, Abbott, is because I posted a picture of it today. That's what it was? <laughs> yes. Oh. So Abbott is Wait, from Boom Studios. Wait, you posted where? On Instagram. Uh, who's Instagram? The Capeless Crusaders. Yeah, our Instagram. So uh, Abbott is uh, an awesome book that uh, it's set in 1972 in Detroit, uh, and it follows a reporter. Um, She is the only black reporter uh, at this newspaper. Uh, It is uh, Detroit is a powder keg um, for uh, racial issues, and she is this awesome reporter who doesn't take crap from anybody, um, and that also means. exposing police brutality which gets a lot of heat on the the paper um and so it, you think it's going to be just like a kind of a crime noir reporter uh story and then it takes a turn um when she f- uh, is brought to the scene of a murder and she sees these like shadowy ghost figures around the body um because it actually turns out that her ex-husband who has passed away uh knew a bit of magic and uh, was involved in the supernatural and had like like warding like sigils and stuff to protect her so she sees these these things and she knows it has something to do with his death so it takes a very supernatural turn all while dealing with these very real issues in detroit uh so so abbott not that abbott not abbott and costello uh abbott is super well done it's only on issue one but it's sold out immediately so you need to get on it uh if you have not yet it i mean boom studios like i said just came out so that is that that is what i read this week curtis Hmm. Throw so your hat back in the ring, my friend. You haven't done this in a while. But Man, let's just oil oil the, the gears. And uh Do we need to address the question from chat about the uh the IKEA? Did he have a modular coffin? <laughs> what do you think? It's made out of terrible uh, Is his name Ingvar Kopra? It's made out of uh what is this just compressed together sawdust. Oh and, yeah, 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 yeah. I, and, I, I, and, I forgot what they even call it. But yeah, it's made out of that. Yeah. Okay. It's, hollow, hollow wood. It'll last. It would hollow. It'll last him for a year underground, but that's all that matters because you know whatever. Yeah. Back to the earth. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, back to the earth. And back <laughs> to the heron, the pickled heron from whence you came. <laughs> and back to the round the horn. <laughs> back to the round the horn. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's supposed to be like a limit to this thing, right? I keep reading <laughs> the Ultimates because because uh, I like it. Um, it's the it's the Al Ewing and Kenneth Rockefeller run of the ultimates and it got, it got broken up because of civil war two was that it, it did a disservice when it got broken up oh yeah i stopped reading it, <laughs> when it got broken up. so yeah you, <laughs> you, you can say that yeah but um and then it got broken up again by uh evil empire but mm-hmm. but that one was a little more worthy mm-hmm. yeah. secret empire Huh? Yeah, 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 Secret Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, but that one was fine. But um, I, so uh, it got split up between between those. So I, I read all of the one after, post Civil War two. So I've been going back and reading, rereading the first part. Um, and it's good. I mean, the the team is Miss America, um, Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. um, Blue Marvel. Mm-hmm. So no shortage of Marvels on this team. Mm-hmm. Spectrum, Monica Rambo, and T'Challa. 
Um, <laughs> AKA the Black Panther. You the just gotta troll. put your jaw in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's dope to see, I mean, uh, like, knowing how, knowing how capable Black Panther is, I mean, obviously with the movie coming out and everything, that's nice, but knowing, uh, knowing how capable he is, uh, like, you know, and I did enjoy, especially the, like, the earlier part of, um, Ta-Nehisi Coates' run on, uh, Black Panther, the current run, um, it was nice to see him out of that element where he is kind of dealing with more of the things going on in Wakanda. And now he's straight up, like not even on earth, yeah. um, doing things in this version of the, I mean, it's still similar to the, the, to the, the original ultimates with like cap and iron man and all those you guys. But son of a bitch. Serving. Ugh, flex it. I love you too. The, the William Regal. Flex. <laughs> the little push up. Yeah, man. You King William it. Regal. Yeah. Nice. Um, so anyway, yeah, they're they're out there. They're trying to solve issue, solve cosmic issues. So they've gone, and they're the first thing up on the plate was Galactus. So they don't, they don't, they don't like don't tiptoe play. you in yeah. at all. It's yeah. like straight to okay, we got to solve Galactus. It's like, hey, we're a team. Should we go fight bank robbers? Nah, nah. 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 Let's let other people. Do nah, it. yeah, eat, eater of eater of worlds. Yes, we'll uh, turn him into the life bringer, Brainer. the creator. Mm. The world, ooh, and that's all in just episode. I mean, issue one. That's yeah. Episode one. <laughs> episode one. Um, and uh, speaking of episodes, but we'll get to that later. Um, let's see. The one other thing that I'm reading. Gosh, I'm reading a few things. Um, dude, yeah, so much. You have a question? Yes. For you. Oh, okay. I made a recommendation, and I wanted to see how you like the recommendation I made. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Tom King, Marvel book. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the vision. Uh, I like it so far. I'm only on issue three, but I like it so far. Um, I like what's going on with Mr. Miracle more, but I think that's. I don't think that's a. That's not a knock to Vision and the work that he did with Vision. He's just a more. He he's a more experienced writer now. He's his, mm-hmm. he's working on his craft. He's getting better. So I do. I have been enjoying that. I, I'll take it to the other physical book that I'm reading. I guess. Um, I'm reading uh, Moon Knight. The Jeff Lemire run um, right now, and um, even though I kind of already know what happens, I'm not. It's difficult to spoil things for me because I still have to see them play out, like on paper or on screen. So I'm um, I'm really enjoying that. You know, is is Mark Spector? Is he crazy? Uh, all these lives, all these all these characters that he's been playing are they are they split personalities? Is he real? Is it real? What's real? I don't know. Conchie, you know, you know what the me. you know the worst part is well, I never answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best part. <laughs> mean, that's what I like. Hey, the don't whole time, idiots. I'm just like, oh yeah, I know. I think I figured it out. And then mm-hmm. I turn the page, and I'm like, no, never mind. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Why are we in a whole other world? Yeah. Why is Mark Spector back to being rich? Yeah, now? and like and the way the, the way the art changes, yeah, like, it just throws you See, into like another world. And that's when artists changing does it's the great. service to it's a book. Great it, to to completely show that other side of his brain. Yep. When especially when to go from. You know, go from him on the on the streets being like the cabbie to being like the space pilot, fighting like the space wolves, and you're like, yeah. "I'm okay. sorry, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> where, where are we at? This? Okay, is Mark Spector crazy or is Jeff Lemire crazy? Or is a bit that, of both. Yes, <laughs> that's the answer. Yes, basically, you get you get a crazy person to write a crazy book. I mean, that's representation. He knows, right? Yeah, he knows, <laughs> right. He he knows across multiple. Fields. He knows what he's doing. Um, so I'll I'll leave it to those. Well, those are solid, Amelia. I want to just trap first. Somebody asked what about Doreen? I think they're referring to... She's not in Ultimates. Mm-mm. Squirrel Girl is not in the Ultimates. Sorry. Nope, nope, nope. nope. Sorry, sorry. Not in there. Um, I read two things. One thing I can talk about and one thing I can hype. I'm just going to leave that at that. Um, the first one I read was Jill Thompson's Wonder Woman, uh, True Amazon, Ooh, yeah. which was a Eisner Award winner, mm-hmm, actually mm-hmm. for best... Was it, I believe it was graphic novel. Um, it took on the, I know, I'm sorry, Lizard Wizard. I know you love Squirrel Girl. It took on the um, the Gollum story for her origin. Mm-hmm. So she was made from clay. Um, the women, uh, all of the Amazons were transitioned to Themyscira because all the men went cray cray. Uh, Hercules came and tried to get Hippolyta. Anyway, it's all over the place. But basically, it is more of the self-centered Diana causing mass chaos, and that's the reason why she's kicked off the mascara. It was really beautifully painted. Um, it was a really good story. It's not personally my favorite as one of her origin stories for the reason that she's going. I 
still kind of like that she left, you know, to help people, but mm. that's just me. But it's part of the mythos. It was beautiful. It's wonderful. If you want a quick read, mind you, it is out in trade. You can totally get that. The other thing I can talk about, but not talk about. It's just hype. It's just hype, you guys. March. It's coming on March. Oh. March 7th. Oh, you got a preview. You oh, son of a bitch. Ah! I love. <laughs> I might have been disabled that. <laughs> I love that it went off as soon as I was like, I think it. Okay. Um, Robert Kirkman's Oblivion Song. Oh. I have access to a preview. Have you heard about this? First four. No. <gasps> Shall I tell you? you Nothing over son there. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I'm not nappy, obviously. <laughs> I am working here. He's doing work. He's doing work. But if you would like to share, <laughs> go right ahead. Continue. And we got Tim the Woodworker. Hype, hype, hype. Um, so Robert Kirkman's Oblivion Song. I got to read the first four issues as preview. I might share it. I might not. Um, it is one day, randomly out of the blue, um, Philadelphia swaps places in a different dimension and it's dropped into an utterly different dimension and where philadelphia was it's a place that's now called oblivion a whole bunch of people are missing and they've been continued to be missing for uh, we're, i think we're eight years in the future at this point and so our main character our protagonist we're following is going uh has been going back and forth between oblivion and where philadelphia is in this other dimension to save people and uh it, it's <laughs> No. And it's Kirkman. It's Kirkman. So, I mean, it's... You know what? Let me be honest with you guys. I am not a Kirkman fan. And Interesting. Yeah, not, and I don't... But I don't dislike Kirkman. Right, right, right. I just... Nothing has ever... What about the Secret me? History, uh, the AMC show that he was producer no, on? Not a comic. So, not a comic. Not a comic. Wait, wait so what, what comics of his have you read? Walking Dead. Okay. Um, <laughs> Outcast, okay. because Bart was watching the yeah, show, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he told me about that one. Uh, and there was another one. There was a, a older one, a heck of older one on Image. It's like I mean, like even with like the old, not battle, movie. not Battle Pope, was it? Eh, no, battle Pope. Battle Pope. Is, yeah, Battle Pope's bad. Some, some. It was some other older one. I know it was obscure. He worked on it with like it was a few writers. It wasn't oh, just okay, him, okay. but 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 it was mainly him though. I forgot who else he collaborated. I can find it. I'll look it up. I it was in the Image app. But that's you, it. Have you read Invincible? Was that wasn't that the one that we all read together? No, we we did not read it as a, we we wanted to. We never did. Do we, I thought we did like either irre, irre, irredeemable or we did irredeemable, not okay. invincible. Okay, okay, okay. No, I haven't read Invincible. I want you to give Invincible a chance. I'll give it a chance because of I want I want to like because him. I'm with you. Outcast, not my favorite, and mm -hmm. Walking Dead. I'm actually one of those people. I love Robert Kirkman, but I don't. I actually, it's not even like I like don't like. Some mm -hmm. people are like, oh, I just it's not my. I don't actually like it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't like it. Yeah. Like, I know I know people say it's amazing. Yeah. But it's one of those things where, it's, like, I have this conversation with people all the time. There's, like, award-winning things that I don't like. No, so same. Just, and it doesn't okay. mean doesn't okay. mean that it's bad. But no, it'll, no, no, yeah, yeah. Just, but it'll be like, us. exactly. Someone will be like, oh, like, Breaking Bad is just mm -hmm. everyone, like, everyone loves Breaking Bad. Yeah. I don't like Breaking Bad. Definitely. And, of course, you haven't seen it. <laughs> also, I'm on the same with you for, for Walking Dead. I read the first volume. It was part of one of my English classes. I wasn't really moved, but that's okay. Um, I always try to give people a chance. Um, Luke Bill, yes, I have not seen that movie. Thank you for reminding me. And <laughs> Taz, you, yeah, that's you have to finish that other book. book. Yeah, he still has. He still has Bio. I'm down to check this one out. It's new. Oh no, no, the one that Amy's talking Oblivion about. Oblivion. Well, I have the Ultimate Collection of Invincible back there. That's oh, the other I, thing. I got the library back. Here. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I might let you borrow that one and yeah, see. Why not? Yeah, Zorin, Zorin <laughs> still has my copy of Volume Three, and I think Jay has my copy of Volume Two. I, I, I gotta track them all down. Yeah, that that I mean, it's it's wrapping in like a hundred and four issues. Oh yeah, he says issues. he has it too. He's yeah. in volume three. So but, yeah, and look, even Tim the woodworker says that Taz one needs to finish his book, and he should have gotten the audio book. Yeah, I I I mean, now that I have a kid, a last boy, I kind of understand like when you guys complain about like, but at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, the Azorian one is. Uh, mm -hmm. He's especially slow in this department. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Will Wheaton. Yeah, actually, wait, yeah. Wait, the, the, the audio book is better. Will Wheaton. Hey, hey, uh, Kurt, what are you listening to? Shave your head and go to bed. What's the <laughs> next question? <laughs> Do you have an audio book that you're listening to? Ready Player One. Oh, you are? Ah! 
<laughs> I'm forcibly making everybody in this in this podcast. I, I already read. I read it a long time ago. I'm. I've been. I like that there's slight shame, but I think you're ahead of Taz. So. No, no, no. I'm not. No, there's not. There's not shame. I just. I didn't. I. I you were the only person that knew that I. W- well, you and Malik were the only person, only people that knew that I. I wasn't going to tell anybody until I was done reading. But it's not a big deal that the world knows anymore. Now, it's only so, whole nine yeah. people. <laughs> That's the world to me. I don't really know that many people. Mm-hmm. Well, so <laughs> what? Why oh, did... I'm just reading Lizard Wizard's comment <laughs> and it translated it, and I'll translate it later. Yes. Anyway, um, so that about wraps it up for Round the Horn for the comics we've been reading. So, uh, the other thing we like to talk about, even though Steve's is not here to corral uh, the news monkey, mm-hmm. thus the news monkey is in a cage, not being let out. Mm-hmm. I will manually go through the news uh, because we're not going to deal with that raging alcoholic. There it is. That's pretty news news. Yeah. Yes, of course, Tim. We will come see you at SVCC. Because we're going to be there because unless he cancels, Stan Lee is going to be there and Jeff Goldblum has also been announced that he's going to be at SVCC. Speaking of cancellations... Uh Aha, that's the ham-fisted Segu into our first news topic, which is Stan Lee being hospitalized this last week. Suddenly. Gonna be 100% honest, the man is almost 90, what is he, 93? 95. 95? He's in the 90s? Do we still count after 80? I was about to say, it's getting to the point where... We we stopped counting after 90? He's he's, he's in the 90s. 95, thanks him. He's owed. He is owed. So, I of course we all had the panic when we saw that. When we saw that news, TMZ panicked even more than we did. That news that notification. Insane. We were all just like, "This is this is it. This is." And it didn't. Luckily, it didn't happen. It was a shortness of breath, and uh, I think it was just shortness of breath. Um, not, no other issues. Everything his vitals were good. He spent the night in the hospital, um, checked out, and then came home, and everything was fine. So, Tim. Uh, not Tim. I said Stan. <laughs> Looking over at the chat, Stanley out of the hospital, doing okay. Has not canceled any more con appearances. So just fingers crossed. Uh, do whatever it is you do to uh, to uh, think, pray, hope, wish, question. That according he... to chat, he's over nine thousand. So yeah, he, that, he just keeps going. Keep going. Let's get him over ten k. In other news, uh, we did get a trailer last week. We got a couple More of trailers two. or three, really. But the one that we want to talk about first, mm. Ant Man and the Wasp. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> feeling you have you have thoughts. I'm I'm excited for the movie. Okay. The the trailer didn't really do anything for me. Not even the Pez. The, I mean, no, no, the Pez, the Pez was funny. The, like throwing the throwing the giant Pez dispenser, I thought that was funny. Um, the fact that we saw Ghost, the fact that Ghost is going to be the bad guy, I like Ghost. So that was that was cool, but other than that, and I, and I think this is because what we talked about. The fact is that it's going to be the first movie after Infinity War, mm-hmm. so they feel like they can't really show us a lot right now because they, <laughs> like, like you said, why are we paused? You know, like, what are we? <laughs> you're just wiggling your eyebrows, like, yes, it, it, like I know, like, yeah, like you know, yeah, that conversation with Kevin Feige the other day we went pretty well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened? Batman so, and Robin's always know. So I, it, it, I'm excited for, it, but like I said, it, it didn't want to. They didn't say too much. They basically, we know that they're on the run, um, and that's that's about it because they can't really explain why if Thanos suddenly arrives, why he would suddenly be gone. Like why, why did the infinity war stop? Like did the infinity war pause or is this after the infinity war or is it like, they're, they're really good at keeping this, this timeline. So, so thoughts, thoughts besides my thoughts, any thoughts, some thoughts giant as head. (laughs) <laughs> no. I'm, I'm in giant I'm hello kitty pez dispenser that's all i needed to see i i i i i like the character of hank pym scott lang i don't know much about um i wasn't kind of, i guess similar to robert kirkman i wasn't a big fan of the um the ant-man movie when it came out now there were a lot of things i liked about it and there were some you know things that 
there wasn't a lot of things I didn't like about it, but there was a lot of things that I just kind of was like, yeah, yeah, that's cool, yeah, whatever. Um, so didn't dislike it, but you know, it didn't really. And, and I do like Paul Rudd. Cool. <laughs> Steve's beat you to it. Yeah, I know. I, I just, I didn't even look at the chat. I just threw it out there to try to take some of the thunder. But no, Aslan can't let me, can't let me live it down. Um, but yeah, so I don't know, giant, giant Pez head. I don't need, I don't. I don't need a lot of inspiration anymore to get these are the best movies that some of the best movies that come out every year. I don't need a lot of motivation. It's happening right after just the this is based off of the fact that it's happening right after there has to be something that's important enough that link the two to make it significant enough for me to probably see it at least four times in the theater. Yeah. I like that you're just like I've just resigned myself. At least I'm four gonna times. see it a billion times. I'm beat about the brow by awesome Marvel movies. Yeah. And I'm you know, I'm Tired of being so happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> you need, it's almost like that thing, like the people say, like, you know, you have to experience sadness and disappointment mm -hmm. so you can have a gauge for happiness. Mm -hmm. It's almost so like you need something Thor bad. Too? Yeah, you need you need a palate cleansing Marvel movie, but I we don't Thor but too. we don't want them to tank. No, None of them I want saw Justice League. I have enough to be disappointed about. <laughs> there you go, just little comic movies. That's that's your palate cleansing. The whole, the whole thing. We'll just watch BBS two or three times. Yeah, there you go. Just, just put yourself in a mood. Uh, so I, um, there, there was, a, it was a lot of action, a lot of run and gun. Uh, there wasn't a lot of too much explanation of story, which it was just a tease. It was the first teaser. It's totally fine. At this point, we get a teaser for the teaser and then the teaser and then the teaser and then trailer. The official and teaser. the trailer. Yeah, then the trailer official. One. Then the, the European yeah. release and the Japanese release. Mm -hmm. and, oh, the the Japanese. For the teaser after and then that. eventually you can build three quarters of a movie just with YouTube footage. Maybe it's um, <laughs> Then you get a featurette. And then you get two more teasers. Exactly. And then you get the featurette attached to the teaser with like the two extra frames that you didn't know you needed. And none of those things actually end up being in the movie. No, I'm going to cut it all off. Yeah. But we do know that uh, they're on, like I said, they're on the run. Um, the uh, uh, Hank Pym uses pin particles to shrink his entire building and drag it along like it's a suitcase. <laughs> Uh, so I think, yeah, I, so far I'm I'm pretty impressed by it. I'm really excited for the Wasp, the character of the Wasp. I think she's going to be awesome. Gorgeous. Um, if, if they incorporate Matt Damon from Downsize Me into this, <laughs> I just, it, the whole thing. If up. Rick Moranis makes a cameo. Oh. oh I wasn't going to spoil it, but he's in it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Kevin. He plays Ghost. Kevin. <laughs> I'd be all if he takes it off. If he takes I wasn't, it off and it's sorry, him, that'll bro. be amazing. Sorry. If he takes off the ghost helmet and then he's sitting there and he says Lone money. Star and he, <laughs> You heard it here first. If he says Big it news. we will we will legitimately we will I, I would lose I would lose my mind even though all you guys keep saying it. <laughs> Amy, what what did you think? I know, I know you're you know you have a giant Pez at your place of work, which, which so you I need really to clarify. Impressed. No, actually, the one that they that they supersize is actually the regular size Pez. Even mm. though I have access to giant size Pez, oh, yeah. I work around too much candy to not know the difference between the regular Pez and the big size one and the 60th edition one. Like it keeps going. I didn't know there were that many things. Oh, do you need some Nintendo? Because we've got a full Nintendo kit on right now too. Yes. E okay, gotcha. Um. I was, I'm really excited for it. I'm still a little trying to piece it together because Infinity is going to be the beast mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. for the season for Marvel, which means anything that comes after it will be overshadowed regardless mm -hmm. if it stinks. Um, and I'm saying Infinity, but <laughs> it stinks. No. Um, so I am really excited to see a lot more Wasp. I want to for her to have a greater presence. I can't really tell anything from the trailer because... It's Ant Man and Wasp. And I'm on a just a standalone Wasp movie. Anyway, I gotta wait for that. I, I have goals. On on that note, um I I just lost it. On that note of me wanting a standalone Wasp movie. No, I had something before. And oh, oh, uh the the Honey, I shrunk the gauntlet. <laughs> Honey, I shrunk the jewel. <laughs> the gem. The gem. Oh. The uh oh no the I, I remember what I was when, when you when you said that after uh it being kind of overshadowed by Infinity War that's the, that's the problem that Iron Man three had is it came after that big Avengers event and so it was just kind of like meh. it like it wasn't a bad movie it was me but in comparison to everything that it had just lived up it didn't live up to what had just happened which how do you live up to an Avengers movie like how how is how are we expecting Ant Man how are we expecting Paul Rudd to stack up to 
all of the superheroes Rick being Moranis. all together. Yeah, Rick Moranis would that is be. The, that is the. That's that is the, the Trump that's card. That's the Trump card. That is, <laughs> and not if when when when, when it happens <laughs> when it does. I'm that is that is the one. Like, and I'm totally shoot. down for that. And speaking of trailers, and speaking of Infinity War, uh, if you were watching the Super Bowl uh, for the commercials. Uh, you probably saw the Avengers Super Bowl spot. Because it was the third one that came on in the third commercial. Yes. Um, third and commercial. it... The lag is real. Any thoughts? On the trailer? On the Infinity War trailer? Yeah. Or Infinity War trailer? Yeah. Right? I, I... Honey, I shrunk the stones. <laughs> yeah. It I like the running. I, mean, I like I the running the in Wakanda. After. I like the running stuff. I oh yeah, no. I, so it, what it was is, I, I felt like it's it was that like man of shield. I didn't, I didn't get a lot from it because it was, you know, it cost a billion dollars for them to even get that fifteen second spot. Uh, so dropping the bucket. <laughs> so they didn't make, they didn't Fish do buffs. much, but we did see Cap's Wakandan shield mm -hmm. that looks awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it kind of reminds me of like the that like one Junior Avengers. Uh, I don't know if it was a comic, but I knew it was a, a cartoon movie, an animated movie. I saw it, and like the Captain America kid had like, yeah, like that, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, the triangle yeah, yeah. had like a blazer blade at the yeah, end, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Like came off of a thing like that. Yes. Um. So yeah. So I mean, it was it was cool, but it wasn't really it didn't really do too much. I mean, we definitely saw that Thanos is purple. Like at the yeah. end, at the end, he was purple. purple. They were like, "Hey guys, purple. he's purple." And unfortunately, no. Squirrel Girl is not going to be in Infinity Sorry, War. Sorry, Lizard Wizard. She... Well, there's, she's... there's a TBD. No, don't you... Don't. No, <laughs> Rick Moranis is, and Squirrel Girl. If we, we know give both, we I, know that I promise Girl... I will pay him actual money and not Bitcoin. We know the New Warriors is is going to be coming out and that is going to have Squirrel Girl. And also Bitcoin tanked the other day. So just if you didn't sell off all your Bitcoin... When it was at that high, when you made like, I was, and, and, and if you invested in it last week, I don't know what you were doing. I'm still just investing. Yeah, the go team. Investing in good old paper money. <laughs> I, we need to bring up uh, Taz one and Chad brought up the goatee, the goatee team up of Strange and Stark. That was a really nice shot. And them side yeah. by side with with with, uh, with Spider with Spider Man between them. With the Spider Man. Oh yeah, no, you're talking about when they, yeah, when he's got the, when he's doing the thing, and then Iron Man flies through. Yep. So I, yeah, I thought, I thought it was cool. About the Squirrel Girl thing, uh -oh. the reason, I mean, like honestly, the reason if I'm not playing around, well, I'm kind of like, eh, because it did just come out um, that Ryan Coogler said that um, pa Patriot almost made it into Ooh. Black Panther movie. That would have been, I'll be down with that. And that's a little cap yeah. reference too, yeah. in a way. So. You know, I mean, like, if someone uh, as obscure as, like, I think, Squir I mean, like, Squirrel Girl is going to be on a TV show already. Right. Like, ain't nobody talking about Patriot and the fact that Ryan Coogler was going to put him in Black Panther. Yeah. So, I don't know. That sounds just like, I don't know. I would have been down. I would have been so down with that. Cool. Now he's uh, the other thing is we, we have seen that Lawrence Fishburne is going to be in uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. And he's gonna be he's gonna be Giant Man. <laughs> so we got J. Jones and Jameson going over and being Commissioner Gordon. Mm -hmm. And then we got Perry White coming over and being who? Giant Man. Mm. So the the, the, pro the problem <laughs> the is chat the chat has it the best. Giant Man shrinks. Now he is Mad Man, strength of one man. That's Jeez. True. That is true. <laughs> they should have made him Goliath, though. That was I think he is Goliath. He's supposed to oh, be Goliath. I think he is he is Goliath Giant Man. The problem is it's one of those things where he's the character. Mm -hmm. He's they, they gave him the name, mm -hmm. but won't, won't have the power. I don't think he's gonna have the power. Honestly, hey, but we were just talking about how like, I was talking about how like Monica Rambeau got casted. Mm -hmm. uh, someone got casted as Monica Rambeau. I think it's the girl from uh, She's Got to Have It. The um, the re the redo of the of the Spike Lee movie got, as a TV show. I'm just excited that Monica got cast. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I was like, hey, I mean, they, well, we don't know. She, she might not be well. Spectrum. Which, you know what? At the same time, we How talked about it's cool if she's not. Exactly. But we can't mm -hmm. tell everything we talked about because that could get us paid. Yeah, we might we might have ideas that we pitched to Kevin Feige. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's also like uh, like <laughs> in, in in the the Defenders and everything and, and uh, Iron Fist, we we saw Misty Knight and we're like, okay, she's, she's a cop, she's a cop. And we thought they, they're, they're never going to give her bionic arm like that would be they're not gonna do that that would be crazy that would be crazy and, and then, they, then then they did 
Well, I mean, they, they took off her arm, so we know she's going to get a But a, a I've Bionic seen, arm. if you haven't seen the stills. And and they dropped the Easter egg for it in the in, in the first, uh in Luke Cage, didn't they? Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Well, what's the first what's the first show that she was in where she got shot in the arm and she was bleeding heck of bad and they yeah. had to do the tourniquet? Uh, which, which one was that? That was, that was Luke Cage. That was, was it Luke Cage? Yeah. 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 Oh, and then it was the defenders that she was. She, okay, yeah. got it. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, so I mean, I, and and so I'm I'm down with it, um, and I, I really hope he is giant man, but I would also be if he was just you know the guy. Yeah, I'd be okay yeah, with that, that too. Man. Um, I for a second though, I I I saw it, and just for like because they showed, they showed Lawrence Fishburne side by side with the character, mm-hmm. and just for a second I thought he was the Blue Marvel. I thought that's who he was gonna be, no. and I was like. I would be so down if he was the Blue Marvel, but it's not happening. So no, not yet. Not yet. That's not okay. Yet. So the uh, and speaking of the Super Bowl, uh, and the the spots that we got from that. Last but not least, this trailer is for you. Okay. Uh, we got none other than the solo <gasps> teaser trailer. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. thoughts mm-hmm. on. The solo trailer. Amy. Lando. Yeah. That that shot. Yeah. And uh, is it Kira or Kyra? Ka- 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 oh, Do yeah. you... Posh Ka- Ka- Mother. Yes. Yeah. Mother of Dragons? <laughs> M- mother of, just, yeah, my Mother of Dragons? Solo. Mother of Solo? All are by her real. She is... She is... Uh, bend the knee. I... So, I'm going to be 100% honest. It, this one was really hard for me because I was like, wow, this looks cool. Like right. they had like the speeder and he was, and then you see Chewy and then you see Lando and I'm like, these, are, I'm down with them. I'm cool. That's cool. And then all of a sudden you see Solo and I was like, that's not Harrison yeah. Ford. Hey, I liked him in, in um, what was the, yes. I'm not saying he's Hobie not, Doyle. I'm not oh, saying he's not going to get me a plate of beans. I'm not I saying like he's him, not though. a good actor. I'm not saying he's not a cool person. I'm saying as soon as he walked on, I was like, Crap! You didn't like the uh, you didn't like the, you uh, have no the new hope uh, nappy uh, nappy on <laughs> solo. Dude. No, no, and <laughs> that's the one thing I nailed. I was like, well, they got the nappy on yeah. solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they definitely got. But that. it don't look good on you. It, it, it's it's t- it's tough because there's there's some characters where you're just like that. That's who the character is, mm-hmm. and Harrison Ford will always be Han Solo. Yeah. And I knew this was going to be a hard, and I didn't want them to do like a, a CGI young Harrison Ford because those yeah. look terrible. Yeah. Um. So. Other than on Solo, I thought the trailer was pretty cool. Um, I mean, we got, you know, we, the, him dropping out of the Academy, talking about that. Like, we see the Millennium Falcon, like, in good condition. Hey. Uh, looking pretty sweet. We got a piece what? of junk. Yeah, not, <laughs> not, not a uh, trash Gosh. pile. Yeah. We got uh, Lando looking Ooh, so, so good. Mm-hmm. Um, which is interesting that Billy D. Williams, for me, is iconic as Lando, mm-hmm. yet for some reason, mm-hmm. like, Gambino's on board. Yeah, Charles Gambino, he, he did it for me. Just whereas stand, this other guy he didn't. He didn't have to say a dang word. He just stood there. Yeah. And I'm just like. So I don't know. Yes. I don't know what it yes, was. Yes, now, please. So, but, but, but I mean, Curtis, you're, you're, the, you're the, the Star Wars. You're the one who more than. He said it with his chest. More than anybody, surprisingly, will, will just discuss and argue and research Star Wars. Should have made a land. Should have made a land. So how'd you feel? Like did did you enjoy the trailer? Um, yeah, I mean, like just like you said, like everything was good about it except Han Solo. <laughs> I mean, that's, right? Like I yeah. enjoyed, yeah, I enjoyed seeing Childish Gambino's um, rendition of the Lando because Lando is my favorite. Lando Calrissian is my favorite, and not because he's black, because he's, he's Billy D. Williams. He's so, <laughs> but he's so smooth. Like that's just even if you read the standalone, and I. Have you read the standalone comic for Lando? Um, I haven't gotten past the first issue still. Uh, yeah. Put it on your list. Oh no, it's on the list. It's just man, I had to get through. But um, no, no, no like uh, no, I, I like I like Lando Carus. I, I, well, I like. They I mean this. He's they let a pimp in space. He has a Cadillac, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, and he has a cape. So. Colt forty five. <laughs> Colt forty five. But um, no, no, no. I mean, it was good. My favorite parts of it were yeah, Charles Gambino, and then also um when. When they showed like whatever, whatever like that the nemesis is or that like new robot that was fighting on top of the train and like kind of like cut the cut the train in half or whatever when they're fighting, um, those parts were cool to see. So I mean, I totally understand why they why they like didn't show us anything before they knew that 
um, old Aaron Reich doesn't look good as Lan as as uh, Han. So now that we know that now, uh, see, I'm gonna do the smart thing. I'm just gonna be like, well, now that I know that I don't like that he looks like Han Solo, I'm just gonna blank him out of my mind and like every other part of this movie that I can, because this is what being a Star Wars fan possibly feels like after the Last Jedi. <laughs> Well, the other, yeah, the other everything's gonna pale in comparison after something big. Yeah, so, well, I didn't like the last exactly, Jedi, so that's why. I oh yeah, like, no, I forgot. Yeah, I didn't like it. so maybe I mean, the, wait, you the, didn't like it? No, I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the the spin though, the like spin, the spin move of, of the Millennium Falcon. Oh, and this is a long conversation to start. No, no. I'm, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, we'll we'll have that talk later. I'm just purposely I'm... Pro prolonging this. Yeah, this the Han, the Han trailer. <laughs> yeah, I thought the Han trailer was uh, not not a letdown, but I'm worried. It, I also didn't. I mean, just because I didn't like him, but I also didn't realize it was already coming out like uh, Memorial Day. Yeah, like, that's that's it is soon. Quick. Now let me tell you why you f you feel like it's coming so soon because, because it's they February? they because unlike every other Star Wars movie that has been produced by disney since they purchased lucasfilm it's they didn't Christmas. they didn't advertise this one a year in advance mm. but because also, they had that issue with lord and miller from the lego movie and the lego batman movie originally being in there and, and they were having people improv and deviate deviate away from the, the script that lawrence kasdan wrote which lawrence kasdan wrote all the best scripts for the star wars right, movies right. And then they had to get Ron Howard to come in because they fired them when there was 70% of the movie already shot. And they had to get Ron Howard, who came from TV so we could shoot the crap out of it, reshoot 80% of the movie. Then they were like, oh, yeah, this is bad. Let's not show anything. It's a Super Bowl. So, you know, that's why. Star Wars fan. So many times. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny that you mentioned Lando being your favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned... Uh, it wasn't because he was black. It's because he's Billy Dee Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, because up on the wall mm -hmm. back there, mm -hmm. uh, Over there, I have a, <gasps> uh, a certain action figure. Oh my gosh! Uh, Lando Calrissian, Wait, uh, the Kenner that? action figure. Oh, the Kenner. Though. Yeah, you, gotta, you might uh, want to sneak over and look because it's that's, actually that's big money. Yeah. Oh uh, no 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 no! I um uh, I don't I want I don't want to do that because I might do inappropriate things with it. Can yeah, don't don't take him out of the out of the packaging. It's actually oh. surprisingly not worth a lot of money. The Kenner action figure is tanked in value because they is they money so worth much. a lot of money? That's true. Yeah. Value, it's all fairy we, dust, we, isn't we, it? We've all we've all made it up. Hey, it. Um, so speaking of action figures, oh. uh, yeah, that was the segue. That, by the way. Wow, <laughs> that got a little odd. <laughs> that kind of went up. Uh, yeah, our main, uh, uh, our main talk. Now that the news is gone and the news monkey is back in the cage, and we never even let him out in the first place, I wanted to talk about comic book toys, classic <laughs> comic toys, specifically from when we were children. Because today there's there are a dime a dozen. I mean, then they were a dime a dozen. Um, but they were I, harder to come by back then, exactly. especially for me. And some of them were special to us. Um, so basically, what I wanted to uh, to start with is some of our favorite childhood comic book related toys uh so now if you were a child of the 90s which i was uh being the young buck that i am in this collection in this collection of ne'er-do-wells um oh, yeah you're, you're welcome so when you were children thanks tim that's right you get that <laughs> snaps tim, all day boy tim i have an original gi joe up there if you want me to bust we, it out we may have been called children at different times exactly Touché, which is why you guys can in the chat can bring up your favorite comic book toys from when you were kids um i in particular um i got to experience i mean obviously this happened all the time but uh when there was a batman cartoon there was an iron man cartoon and Spider-Man Spider -Man cartoon, which of course Justice just spawned Justice dozens Friends. and dozens. Justice, no, Justice Friends was like 60s. I'm giving Tim options. No, that was Super Friends. Is the spawn a pun? Because you have a lot of spawn toys. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so a lot of these uh, these cartoons just gave us just dozens and dozens of unnecessary action figures, which were some of the best ones. Like you never actually saw, and like in the comic books, Batman never had. A, a rocket pack that shot giant missiles and also had you know skis and all these other things and it, if you didn't see iron man in 
an outfit that could shoot frost uh, simultaneously shooting from his repulsors but they still put them out and we still went to toys r us and we still bought them as many as we could uh depending on our allowance or jobs depending on your age in the 90s um, are you stealing or some of the stealing so some of my my personal favorite ones i i just mentioned them they were they were the batman um i had uh in particular uh what was he um he was he was kind of Azrael. um so for those of you who read the uh the nightfall after batman's back is broken all these different people step in and take over as batman jean paul valley exactly um, Bam. it was it was Azrael's armor but it was batman so it was bruce wayne in red and gold oh, really? armor yeah it didn't make any sense and that he wasn't had, in the comic nope not at all <laughs> but they made plastic stuff out of <laughs> exactly. it exactly and they made money off of it uh and it was these big gargantuan black wings that it would uh that you could attach onto him uh and my sister ran over it with her bike and dragged him for like 15 feet and you know what happens when you drag plastic along concrete it, it just turns into like that little gross. white like thing like exactly. it's like shaved exactly. down exactly so basically <laughs> one of his pecs was just missing um and i still I still rocked him for uh for 10 years after that i still have him in my parents house in a box somewhere um and the other thing it's already po- come up in the chat multiple times spawn spawn was my jam um, if you look up, I don't have the camera up here, but I have the original, I have most of series one of the Spawn action figures, some of series two, I have the Spawn movie, I have a box full of all the McFarlane toys, uh, different Spawn, the different covers, and he also did the same exact thing where he would do uh, cover art on the comic books, and it seemed like it was no point other than making an action figure and selling it. Uh, for example, the there was one issue where they all came together, but like the uh, the uh, the gunslinger spawn who had like these big revolvers and this big trench coat. He didn't pop. He wasn't in the comic books. He, he like had the hat too. Yeah. That big tall. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. That was such a good cover. And I have the figure, and it had nothing to do. I mean, it. He, he like, like it said at one point they referenced there was all these other spawns, and you see them for five seconds. But you know, whatever. So throw it to you two. You said it was it was hard to you, you you didn't have a lot of comic book. I'm a girl. Ah, uh, a girl in the nineties. A girl in the nineties. You had you had Polly Pocket and and uh, I did and I had Mighty Max, the male equivalent. Um, what was what? Uh, oh, My Little Pony. Keep keep going. What what uh, other Cabbage things? Patch Kids? Care Bears. Care Bears. I had some uh, some soiree into late nineties, early two thousands. So Sabrina. Yeah, there, like, there was Barbie as always. Barbie, uh, Disney at that point. I was a lot of Donald Duck and Walt Disney. Those are now comic book though. <laughs> so no, they were comic books to begin with. But oh, yeah, Walt yeah. Disney yeah. books were all comic books, um, including. Uh, Rescue Rangers and Tailspin. Sorry. No, it's Rescue good. Rescue Rangers. It's between that and then when I start saying DuckTales and everyone goes, woo! <clears throat> um, so it was really, the fairy spinner thing was not a comic book. Luke Bell. The dragon, Check but yourself. then they have the dragon riders. <sighs> that was all about those. Yeah. The Tim, 90s, man. Tim had to work that, that lawn mowing to get his comic books. 25 cents. Also, Lizard Wizard brought up Pogs. That's hilarious. But these are toys, and even though I could make pogs and put things from comic books on there, I couldn't. So I had to uh, swipe some things. You stole? Yeah, I have I have a brother. I was about to say, you stole from a brother. So I had uh, Street Sharks, which were hand puppets, which were a TV show that actually ended up being a comic book. It did. I had the Also, when you think Hammerhead. Of, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. Did a, um, they had a video game with the... Uh... Mm-hmm. They had a video. Oh no, I'm, I was thinking of the the Battle Toads and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game, but but uh, Street Sharks did have a video. Game. Yes, <laughs> and the and I had a lot of Star. No. We had a lot of Star Wars, mm, so that was really okay, nice. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't really have anything with Darkwing Duck. Um, we had a Stretch Armstrong. That's all. I my- still have a Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> it's at my house. It's awesome. And then uh, the chat has been all up in arms about TMNT, mm-hmm. not just the van, but the uh, Casey Jones. He, he, <laughs> what was and, the what, what was the the te- techno techno dome techno drone techno drone was that is that what it was called? Where in the in the 
the cartoon and in the video game, mm-hmm. it was that giant, like, basic Death Star on wheels that, mm-hmm. that you went to. Mm-hmm. But the toy was, like, you know, no bigger than, like, a volleyball. But it was, mm-hmm. it was blue and it was on treads. And it was, like, the foot soldier, like, <laughs> tank with the big drill on the front. I had that one. I did not have the van. Well, you weren't cool enough. With no, apparently I, wasn't, I was just a bad guy, apparently. Um... I did anyone have Dick Tracy action figures? Whoa! Whoa, <laughs> no, that's I had cool. The, I had to watch them. I oh, know. Everybody wanted that watch. I had to watch. I want to know how old Luke, Luke, Luke Bill is at this point. Because Luke Bill is like going the gamut. I, I know. So that's the best part for me. So this is even more fun. Oh, look. There's agreement. Techno Drone. Techno Drone. Thank you. Of course, it's the Orion one. Who See, else? He's the one that brought up the one of the other ones that brought up the, uh, the van. And then. Um, Sadly, for girls, because we talk about this in my bio on our website, thecapelesscrusaders.com, um, I had access to Archie and Betty and Veronica, and they were paper dolls. Ha! Because oh. there's, oh. n- there's no better way than being a girl in the 90s when you're really into comic books and all that you can find is paper dolls. <laughs> that was a PM Dawn about paper dolls and a Prince song about paper dolls. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice. Thank you. Solid. Uh, so, needless to say, being me in the 90s kind of sucks. Which is interesting, because you don't think about that today. No. The fact that you've got unlimited access, and while there's still a little bit of boys play with this, girls play with this, overall, like you've got a ton of accessibility yeah. uh, when it comes to getting different comic book toys into kids hands funny that you mentioned stretch armstrong because i had stretch armstrong as well but now stretch armstrong and his the one that you had is weird yeah i had the i had the one where he had the long blonde hair and he was like a surfer dude he's like um but stretch armstrong now is being turned into a comic book because it's also a netflix series Mm -hmm. Uh, stretch armstrong and the and his flex fighters flex friends something (laughs) all i know is mine is in a blue speedo and he still stretches real good not, which is yeah, my mind mine stopped stretching all the way back in the day, but but Curtis, you've been you've been quiet. Mm-hmm. What about you? What about your favorite comic? I mean, I'm saying like your favorite doll. So I'm saying, <laughs> quiet I'm in your corner. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I've been selective, conservative. <laughs> Why? Um, uh, every time I think of Stretch Armstrong, I think of Airheads when mm-hmm. um Steve Buscemi like spins around. And like shoots like the uh, like the Uzi that has the hot Got sauce the, uh, the, yeah, in the, the face yeah, yeah. Uh, in the face of the uh, Stretch Armstrong that's like outstretched. <laughs> so yeah, nineties, you know. Um, uh, you know I, I was waiting but, for Earthworm Jim moments when we were talking about shooting an Earthworm Jim out of the top of his helmet. You know, Earthworm Jim was one of those ones that I never hear he's got such made. a groovy guy. He's definitely a groovy guy. I think I watched more of the cartoon. That's, That's why I was quoting the theme song. I have Earthworm Jim on here if we want to play it at some point. I'm busy on that later. Um, for me, I mean, I had a lot of toys. I saw, I was watching that 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 the that Netflix, the toys that made us or whatever. Mm-hmm. There was a guy on there that had like a Star Wars collection, and he mm-hmm. had and 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 it was it talks about actually there's another Obi-Wan one that talks about or one. Rancho Obi Wan. Um, the, the, the name is ringing a bell. Rancho Obi Wan, where he has all the stuff, like all of the stuff, including the two prototypes of the particular Boba Fett. That is ringing a bell too, because uh, I know he talked about the Boba Fett. I think you're right. I don't remember the name off the top of my head. Chat, do what chat does. Fact check, babies. <laughs> Luke, Grassy Luke ass. Bill, is it Rancho Obi Wan? There you go, Luke Bill. But um, oh man, I think uh. Oh, what they were saying is that, like, the Star Wars movie, like, made, I don't know, let's say, like, I forget the exact numbers, it's like 30 million, but the toys made, like, 70, mm. because that's why they press so hard and make sure that you get your uh, porgs and whatnot, because right. the toys always, almost right. always, because think about it, you're going to, what, you, maybe you spend 13 bucks on the ticket for the kid, right? But like you're gonna go you're at least good. buy him forty five dollars worth of plastic stuff yeah. between Legos and all that other stuff, yeah. so they're gonna get more money on the back end. That's why they push that stuff in there. Um, I'm just gonna name one toy, uh, or maybe two, but the main one was my Batwing from the eighty nine Batman oh, movie. Wow, was that the was that the big one? Yeah, yeah it was yeah, the big one. Yeah, um, I wanted that one. Yeah, it was shaped uh, like my main concern. I remember what my concern was when I was a kid because when I watched the movie, you know, there's a scene where it's the moon and the Batwing. <laughs> 
So I was like, man, it's got it. Like, don't make it like too slender, like the Batman, like uh, like the one from uh, the animated series. Mm-hmm. Like, don't make it too slender. Like, I need it perfect circle, dude. Because you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get in the bathtub and I'm gonna go, Wee! you know what I mean? And I'm gonna <laughs> at the light bulb and I'm gonna make it fly right there and dip right back down. So it needs to be circular, and um, and it was. It was great. That's the that's the main. <laughs> I won't do two. I think one. No, I think that's awesome. That was good. I there's there's more uh just recently there's like a collector's edition version of the the uh, Batman animated series. It's massive. Batmobile. Mm-hmm. I want that one. Yeah, where it's just like the blocky long. Heck yeah, man. Oh, I'd be all about that one. I like yeah, it's all art deco style. Yeah. That was so when I was a kid, my favorite thing about going to garage sales mm-hmm. was tracking down the mm-hmm. big toys like that that Absolutely. someone had bought mm-hmm. and then I was able to get them for pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the Literally. dollar. Or like points. I had a uh there was a a G.I. Joe like stealth bomber. It looks really it's oddly like a Quinjet, actually, like a like oh, a solid nice. white Quinjet. Okay. And it like separated like Star Trek style and like a, like a back and a front that could fly. And it had so these bombs and it actually mm-hmm. you could load them up in and there was sliders that you could like drop all the bombs out as it was oh, flying over. Cool. I was all about that thing. Man. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? It was always bathtub, best yeah. place for combat. Um, but yeah, it was for paper dolls. <laughs> it's just multiple terrain. You got the side of the well. <laughs> so they clogged the they clogged. Yeah, Betty and Veronica. You can always make new ones, but they clog. <laughs> so yeah, I there was so many that and at, at the time well, some of them weren't necessarily comic book related but now since then have become comic book related because yeah. you know when the star wars figures first came out it was just star wars but within a couple of years star wars had a comic book yeah. uh, i actually have at my parents house they were my brothers um i don't even think they realized what they've got the um the the Star Wars action figures where they had the lightsaber like stored in their okay, forearm, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can, and you like, and yeah, and you like yeah. push it out, yeah, yeah. and so he's just, so, so basically Vader's mm-hmm. hand is just like in this weird, yeah, 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 yeah. shape, yeah, yeah, yeah. like he's, he's holding got... a flashlight, and then mm-hmm. you just push it out, and he's got this cheap like plastic, not mm-hmm. really a cape, mm-hmm. it's more of just like it like two pieces in the front and then one big piece in the back, and it doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense at all. So we have a bunch of those okay. at my parents' house, and as we also. Uh, have because again, not a comic book at the time, but since then has become a comic book. Uh, Castle Grey Skull yes. from He Man and the Masters Which of the they Universe. They just released pops for those, so you're welcome. Oh, I'm down with that. And we saw He Man in the chat pop up once or twice. Uh, so I had again all these things that became eventually. You want to talk about Star Wars? They they pushed the action <laughs> figures. Since then, how many nostalgic TV shows, action figures have then been turned into comic books to continue the medium to continue the demand? Jesus. Transformers, huge example. Like just all these things that when they go into another medium, they can kind of maybe fly into the radar for a little bit and then come back up in relevance. And all of a sudden, boom, just action figures, new toys coming out of the woodworks. I've seen Hanna Barbera all over again. Hanna Barbera is just, they're the kings of taking this nostalgia train and just running off. She Ra. Mm. There's 10 She Ra. Shiraz. Shiraz is the one's getting a Netflix show, right? And it's by Noel Stevenson, Noelle Stevenson from Lumberjanes, which is also just another I love it. fantastic option. Sea monkeys. I sea monkeys were sea monkeys were fun. Were there? I, yeah. I, I was thinking the, the, I was thinking of the snorks. No, we don't talk about the snorks, the ripoff smurfs. <laughs> That's like saying Jabberjaw was a ripoff Scooby Doo. Which Jabberjaw was totally ripped off. Uh, which a lot of these, is, a, a lot of these have popped up. Like you said, the Hanna Barbera thing, they popped up in comic books again recently. Like a lot of the crossovers that uh, that DC did with the Hanna Barbera characters. Johnny just, Johnny Quest, Space Ghost. Oh, uh, Space Ghost! All about Space Ghost. Did they do Booster? Yeah, they did, they did Booster, Booster Gold with the Flintstones. Um, they did uh, like Green Lantern with. I can't remember. No, Green Lantern with Space Ghost. Space Ghost. Yeah, and, and then. then... Uh, Adam Strange with Future Quest. Uh, they did Tasmanian Devil and Wonder Woman. Like Elmer Fudd and Batman. Yeah, these were all just so good. Yeah, so the, that book is so good. The cross media that we get to experience now is is a pretty uh, a unique and uh, fun experience, um, and it all harkens back to the toys we had as a kid, creating our own battles. Whether it's in the bathtub, this <laughs> light here. <laughs> I had a uh, I had a stealth mode Buzz Lightyear. He was solid blue. 
uh, and That's and right. like yeah, and like and like, and like and like reflective and super shiny with black wings. Mm. Apparently, that meant stealth mode. Yes, your oh, army yeah, men yeah. count, like, Tim. Yeah. Your army men always count. Army men count. Hey, what's the what's what was those like our really popular stealth bombers that we had for a while that like didn't have a longer fin than the rest? They were all like sawtoothed at the back. Yes, triangle. I know exactly which one you're talking about because I had a yeah. I had a toy of that and I would never. Right. It well, would that run, was popular. At it would that go time. bombing runs yeah. in the bathtub because that was like a little while after. It like it basically came out that we had that in our fleet. Yeah, yeah. And then like it, they were super popular and like probably yeah, they looked so cool. And that, that was like inspired all kinds of comic book. Everyone flying around and stealth bombers and everything. Oh yeah. Hey guys. I say nostalgia. So there's we could talk for hours about action figures and toys, and we could just go on. I could take some of them off the wall we could we could make... bring up that really weird peter pan tv show that used to be on fox in the 90s it was like peter pan and the lost boys yeah which that and then but now there's uh oh what's the one right now that's really popular with the kids the the one about the pirate uh the kid who's the pirate but it's like never never land um all i thought of was peter pan's across first i don't know i'm gonna be in and then i thought like... of peter pan and scarlet which is the sequel to peter pan. i have a, a a newborn so this is just gonna be my life just cartoons and everything coming up here you're gonna enjoy it except for the not, Dora the explorer face not share any of these toys with her though because these are expensive these are collectibles That's why they're on i the keep them in the packages them. so anyway that is no, about... I'm looking around going, hmm, that is about gonna wrap it up for this week's episode of the capeless crusaders talking about classic comic book toys uh, thank you for everybody in the chat who participated. Uh, if you liked what you saw and you're not all the way to a follower, hit the button with the heart and follow us. Get the notifications. If you want to, you could. Uh, Jake and the Neverland Pirates, thank you. Attack 4. Jake and the Neverland and Lizard Wizard. I needed you guys in there. Uh, if you like what you see, you can cheer us the bits. You can donate. You can subscribe. Do all those wonderful things. Um, so, yeah. So, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, as always, you can find anything related to the Capeless Crusaders at thecaplesscrusaders.com. That is our website that has everything. Uh, if you're watching, it is above Curtis's shiny head. Wow. <laughs> uh, thank you to Computer Booter, our sponsor, Computer Booter, your local uh, computer repair at Retro Game uh, Lounge. Like I said, if you mention this ad, because this is an ad, you get 10% off. Uh, also, Empire's Comics Vault, our uh favorite local comic book hovel hovel it is not a hovel. no that's sir. not the word i'm looking that for that is an appropriate no term. what's what's the word i'm looking for it's not a home a yeah let's go homestead. Home. whatever anyway for the capeless crusaders my name is david barry at dr barry on varying social media platforms to my left in front of the camera again and it feels so good there is that calm down warning at existential friend. there it is uh over oh. you did the hair flip yeah. you really are Thoriel. you guys should check out our clips and find out what that meant this is amy you can find me at ijview robot on varying social media because i like that handle yes hey that music that means it's about time for us to get out here so thanks for watching thanks for sticking around for the